Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you to both the witnesses. You're very, very welcome. Uh, Mr. Gormley, I just want to, if I may, at the outset, just verify a, a quote of yours, if I may. Um, it's from a, a radio interview in December 2010 with Marianne Finucane. Um, and you say, the arrangements have been made the previous Sunday, right? And we've gone into that in quite a bit of detail. And said, yes, this was the expert advice to go down the guarantee route. And she then asked you, when was this decision made? And you said that was on the day before. It was a Sunday. We had a cabinet meeting. We'd gone through it in quite a bit of detail, as I said. Do you recall saying that? I, I do recall a, a meeting with, uh, sorry, uh, an interview with uh, Marion Finucane. Um, and uh, if the impression was given that, that there was a cabinet decision, uh, I've, I think I've clarified that here today, that I spoke to Minister Lenehan and the Taoiseach at, uh, at pre-cabinet. Uh, Mary Harney has referred to a short discussion at the end of the actual cabinet meeting, which, frankly, I don't, uh, don't recall. But uh, that, the quote that you've just gave, uh, have given me there, that, that may be slightly misleading because the account that I've given here today is, uh, is accurate. Okay. I mean, it certainly does give that impression. And if we go in later to the interview, Brian Fleet can ask again. Can I just ask you a question? I think the rest of us thought of the two Bryans, the decision was made that night. And you responded, well, you couldn't just make a decision on the spur of the moment. You have to discuss it for days in advance. Of course not. And you can't do it like that. Everybody had to be involved in what was the best thing to do in these circumstances. Yes. Yes. Well, that is, that is true. We, um, we had to you know, discuss this. I did discuss it with the, um, with the two ministers on the Sunday, and that is absolutely the case. Okay, but is it fair to say that the impression that you gave in that interview in 2010 was that a decision had been made by Cabinet on the Sunday? Well, I mean, I've seen it quoted, and I've seen it quoted in that context, and unfortunately um, it has been interpreted in that way, but that's not the impression. I didn't want to give the impression that the Cabinet had decided, because clearly the Cabinet had not decided on that issue. Okay. And everybody had been involved in what was the best thing to do in these circumstances. We've been discussing it for days in advance. That's I mean, true. Are you referring to the Cabinet meeting the day before, in which you had a brief discussion with the Minister in the afternoon? We had been... Well, I think the emails show, or the evidence that I've laid before the Committee, is that uh, it has been discussed in quite a bit of detail in the days beforehand. And I had been discussing it, as I said, with... Um, People have referred to it as contrarian view. I discussed it with uh, David McWilliams. Uh, I discussed it with uh, the Minister for Finance and the Taoiseach. And it had been discussed. In, and, and I think you can see from the emails that they're quite specific. And, uh, you know, it, it's gone into quite a bit of detail. But can I just to clarify that, no decision made on the Sunday, not even informally, to go for a system I guarantee. That was, I, I've made that very clear in my opening statement and indeed my opening remarks that. Uh, there was no cabinet decision in relation to it. Okay. Can I move forward then to the, the cabinet uh, decision on the, the bailout, which was the 27th of November 2010. And the cabinet was informed that there'd be no burden sharing in the terms of the, the Troika agreement. Mm. And your reaction to that, please. Well, uh, we had to take legal advice um, on this. Um, I listened carefully to the uh, advice that we were offered by the um, Attorney General. Um, I think it's fair to say that, and I, you know, as Mary Harney said, we're going back a period of time and I'm trying to recollect exactly, but it's often been said that um, we didn't resist, that we just caved in. That's not the case. Minister Lenehan did make efforts um, to include um, bondholders. Uh, he did want to actually to use that phrase that has become often used now, burn bond holders. Uh, but a number of things happened. Uh, first of all, and this, I'm just uh, you know, this is my recollection, um, we did get some support from um, Strauss Kahn, uh, who, who was supportive of, of our ideas in relation to this. Uh, but uh, Trichet wasn't supportive. Um, and Particularly then, uh, I'm, I'm thinking back, there was a meeting then, subsequently, uh, where Tim Geithner was there, and he was not supportive. And um, the very clear view of the Attorney General at that stage was that they were to be treated in the same way as depositors. And so therefore, it was not possible. Um, and that's, that's my recollection of that. Can I just ask my recollection as well? When, when the terms of the bailout were, were, were given to the Cabinet in terms of no burden sharing and the interest rates that were to be applied, did someone describe it as um, the Treaty of Versailles when what was needed was a Marshall Plan? Hmm. 
do you recall that exchange? And then that, that person being told not to say anything like that outside of the cabinet room. Um, that, that, that does actually ring a bell. And, uh, but I let me. It does ring a bell. Um, but I can't. Um, I can't recall. I mean, we were. We were. I mean, you can compare it to the, the Greek situation, right? Um, people say, you know, uh, we ought to have stood up to these people. Well, we did stand up. But there comes a time when you have to use, you know, your political smarts and know when you're beaten. We're a small island in the Atlantic. We don't have huge power or influence. We're up against the might of these people. So what are you to do under those circumstances? Uh, well, we said the only thing that we can do um, is to go along with this. Um, as much as it sticks in our craw, and it did. And I think it was the right decision, Deputy, because um, if we had gone down um, the, the Greece route, well, we, you see what the consequences can be. And I do remember saying to people, you know, and people thought I was exaggerating at the time, uh, you know, if we are in a very difficult situation here. If we um, don't get this right, um, the ATMs will close. And people thought this was a gross exaggeration. Well, you can see now that it wasn't. The ATMs could have closed, and we could have had a very serious situation. So I think we made the right decision. I just slow you a supplementary there. You're not finished, Deputy. You're on the same line of questioning. Nothing, nothing new now. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't had a chance to ask this morning a question, Chair. Well, I, I, OK, I, there's gender parity here. I'll allow that but very, very briefly. OK, I have a whole new line of questioning. Ms. Harney, it's just in relation to um, fiscal policy at the adoption of the euro, because you mentioned it in yeah. a bit of detail in your statement, and you talked about it in hindsight. Um, it's clear that some significant policy adjustments were needed from about 2001 onwards. And it was exactly the beginning of 2001 that the Commission and the Council censured us for incorrectly using fiscal policy and for overheating the economy. And an article at the time from the RTE said, Harney accuses the European Commission of misjudging Irish economic situation. Now, obviously, you didn't choose the uh, headline, but in that article, uh, you criticise Europe for not understanding, actually, uh, the budget situation in Ireland at the time. So, on reflection, was the Council correct? No, I, I, I think, to be fair, um, the, the Council were, was taking a view towards Ireland that it didn't take towards other larger countries. Um, I think the point I was making about the Euro was a different one. Uh, I think if we had put the effort in post-joining the Euro, that we put into the preparation of joining the Euro, we might have been able to identify the risks earlier and to have mitigated some of the, uh, the, the difficulties. And I regret that we, we, we uh, didn't do that. And can I just reflect back on, on the question you asked, if it's in order, um, Mr Gormley. From the time Chancellor Merkel and President Sarkozy made their comments at Deauville that peripheral countries' bondholders um, would, would, bonds would not be fully honoured. We were on a hiding to nothing, quite honestly. The, the momentum after that was just uh, incredible. Um, and Ollie Wren came to Ireland. And in relation to um, trying to get a better deal, I think the IMF were supportive, the ECB weren't. Uh, and that was our difficulty. Um, we, we sought the right down of senior debt in the banks. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, the IMF were very supportive of that, but the ECB weren't. Um, and by the time it happened, we didn't have an alternative, quite honestly. 